Welcome to the Ghostman Radio Station, and tonight my guest is Stacy Chilemi. She's on a mission to transform the health of millions worldwide. Check out her website, thecompleteherbalguide.com. She's a popular, recognizable health and lifestyle reporter, expert columnist, and health host. She's author of the Complete Guide to Natural Healings, Natural Remedies for Common Conditions. 20 other published books, so she's a very popular, very busy writer, and a friend of the Complete Herbal Guide and a recognised health and natural remedies expert for over 20 years, practised as a health coach. She's written for, or wrote for, whichever way you define it, Huffington Post, Huff Post, Trivial, Global and Medium. I have been, you've been a guest on lots of things, and her focus is on natural healing, Herbal remedies, alternative methods, self motivation, food for medicine, natural no, nutrition, sorry, fitness, natural beauty remedies, and the power of positive thinking. And hello, Stacy. How are you today? Hi, Mark. It's a pleasure to meet you. Now, tell me a little bit about you. I know you. You mentioned you you had have or have. Epilepsy. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Is that okay? Oh, sure. Um, at the age of five, I so all started out with an ear infection, and the ear infection uh, into encephalitis. Uh, one day, my parents heard some gargling from the other room, and my mother went in the hospital. Um, they had rushed me to the hospital, um, and I had had uh, encephalitis that traveled throughout the brain. And um, they induced me in a four-day uh, coma. Um, I was uh, in coma for four days, and they thought when I came out that I probably would be paraplegic or I'd probably have severe brain damage. And um, the uh, first thing I asked for when I came out um, was McDonald's French fries, <laughs> and I, I didn't have uh, I didn't have um, brain damage, and I didn't. Um, I, I wasn't paraplegic, but I, I did end up with epilepsy, and I struggled my entire life um, with seizures. Um, it was uh, very difficult. It was like a roller coaster ride. Uh, when I got into college, it, it was extremely difficult because of the, the stress of the studying and the late night studying and, and all the other things that college takes from a child. Um, you know, it, it put a lot of pressure on me, and I was tending to have a lot of seizures. And I said, Oh my goodness, how am I going to do this? How am I going to get through life? Um, you know, if I can't handle college, I'm not going to be able to handle anything. And I was very frustrated, and I decided to write a letter to the Epilepsy Foundation. And in uh, America, we have, um, in, all the, in all the states, we have um, the Epilepsy Foundation, and the main one is in Washington, and they have a magazine um, all about epilepsy. And I wrote uh, to the editor, and I asked them to publish my article, and I asked, I asked them in the, letter, in the uh, article, I said, what do people do to actually get through um, uh, epilepsy, how do they cope with it, how do they live with it, and, um, you know, surprisingly, I had three to four hundred letters from all over the United States and Canada come to my uh, college dorm uh, from people all over that had epilepsy, and I really, I never knew how many people actually suffered from epilepsy, and uh, so many of them were such inspiring letters, and it really made me feel that I wasn't alone. I realized that there were a lot of other people out there, and a lot of the advice that these people gave me were really helpful and helped me throughout college, and gave me a lot of inspiration and motivation to actually conquer my dreams. And uh, when I got um, out of college, I started working for a big corporation, and um, I was doing really well for a long time, and then one day I fell to the floor and I had a grab mal seizure, and uh, the person, um, uh, the uh, producer at that time saw me, and he walked over me and kept walking, and he, uh, and 30 minutes later, his associate uh, released me from my position. And I was really frustrated. I was really, uh, um, you know, I didn't, you know, I just, but I, I didn't let it get to me, and I just kept moving on. And uh, one thing I was doing during college and, and during um, all the time, I was writing a book. I was, I was taking a lot of those inspirational stories because they were so helpful to myself. And uh, I was trying to uh, write a book, but I never had the time to finish it. And when I was released from that position, I actually, my husband looked at me, um, 
and he said, why don't you just finish that book? Because I was just going to be at that time. And uh, so I, I did. I finished it. It was called Epilepsy, You're Not Alone. And the book actually uh, did really well because at that time there weren't a lot of books on epilepsy. There was maybe like about three or four books about epilepsy and they were written by doctors and in uh, medical terminology. So if you weren't a doctor, it was really hard for the everyday person to understand um, the points the, the author was trying to get across to you. So um, the book did really well, and one day I opened up my email, and there was a person that wrote to me and told me that they were on the verge of suicide, and that they wanted to commit suicide because everything was taken from them. They lost their job, they lost their license, everything that meant something to them uh, was taken from them, and they couldn't be the head of the household anymore, and that meant a lot from them because they were, um, you know, very old school, and they wanted to take care of their family just like anybody else. And so they said when they read my book, um, she, uh, she said they said that uh, my um, my uh, points in the book and my regiments and all the letters gave them some inspiration to actually uh, want to move forward, and they they followed what I did, and they. Uh, she said that she actually had a will to live. She she uh, she she realized there was more to life, and and you know she she kept on moving and she kept on uh, uh, she uh, kept on going. And she said that my book helped her live. And at that point, I realized, wow, you know, uh, words of wisdom can really be very powerful. And sometimes people don't realize it, but sometimes the things that we uh, we say in life. Um, you know, can really have an effect on another person. And even with writing and the internet and articles and books, um, you can really change a person's life. And it was at, at that point I realized what my true passion was. And that's when I started moving forward and started trying to help people through my writing. That's impressive. Um, I remember when I first saw um, an epileptic fit, and I will admit it did scare me because I'd never seen one before. And I didn't know what to. Uh, I didn't know what to do, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I fully admit it. And people say, "Oh, you shouldn't say that," but you've got all these myths about putting a spoon in someone's mouth, and I don't know, weird and wonderful myths. You know, it's uh, you know, it could be, it, it is very scary. And for years, I didn't really know what a epilepsy fit was because, you know, when I would have a seizure, most of the time I would go unconscious, so I never saw myself have a seizure. And uh, you know, and the first time I actually saw someone have a seizure, it was very scary. Um, it is, you know, especially for someone who's not used to seeing someone have a seizure, it could be uh, very traumatizing for that individual. And I even remember one time I was in class and I felt a seizure coming on. I'm like, oh no. I was in my, my uh, college class and my professor was teaching and then I woke up and the class was in dead silence and everybody was staring at me and I looked around and I was like, oh my goodness. And, you know, I was just, at that time, I was just very lucky because the professor that was teaching the class, actually, his roommate in college had epilepsy, so he saw his roommate have them all the time. So it didn't it didn't make him nervous at all. And he, he just looked at me, and he's like, are you okay, Stacy? And I was like, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Um, and, he, and, he's, uh, and he's like, everything's okay, class. Let's get back to work. And I got up, and I sat back in my seat, and I continued listening. Um, most of the time when people have seizures, you just have to make sure they're in a safe spot where if they start shaking or moving their head or, you know, swinging to the left or right side, um, you know, because their body, um, you know, their, their, the nerves in their brain are, you know, are not, the waves are not going, it's kind of like a thunderstorm. You think about, like, on a, on a sunny day, your, the nerves in your brain are going to the, um, are going nice and smooth and then all of a sudden a seizure comes and think about a, a thunderstorm for a minute. Everything goes haywire for those, those few minutes of that thunderstorm. And um, so you have to just make sure the person's in a safe spot um, and then, you know, you can you sit with them. And usually a seizure doesn't last um, too long and, uh, you know, it can, and then, you know, the, the person should be fine. They might experience some memory loss and they might experience, um, uh, you know, a little confusion, um, and, uh, you know, they, they may have some fluid saliva, but, um, you know, overall, a normal, a, a, on, on a normal day, um, a seizure, uh, a, a person usually gets over it, and they might be a little tired afterward, but they usually are okay after the seizure is, is done. 
And did this inspire you to look into alternative medicine? Yes, I, you know, as time went on, like I was mentioning when I was working in the city, it was really hard, um, you know, my seizures weren't getting better, and, you know, um, so I started, um, I decided after um, I was released from my position, I started to, I decided to open up my own little um, freelance business, and I was writing for lots of people, and then one day I was writing with it for an herbalist, and he had me do a lot of research and writing for him. And I was doing that research and writing, and then I started applying some of that stuff to my own, um, in my own life. And I was like, wow, this could, you know, actually help me. This might, you know, make me better and, and help me in, in certain ways. And I started applying alternative medicine and uh, to my own life, and I started changing my lifestyle and, and the way I slept, the way I ate, everything. And uh, and I, I my seizures went from nine seizures to six to five to four to three to two, and my seizures kept getting better. And you know I realized that you know it's all about how we take care of our bodies. It's how about it's about what we eat. Um, you know and uh, you know. Um, and live in a, a healthy lifestyle. It can have a huge impact on your epilepsy or any other condition. Um, you know, not just epilepsy, but any condition or any any um, any situation. If you if you can take care of your body in the proper way and, and and do the right thing for your body, you can see that your body can actually heal itself in many situations. And that's when I started. Um, I started uh, writing a little blog on Blogger. I started out with like 400 people, and then I was like, "Wow, people are actually interested in this." And then I, it, over time, it grew from you know 400 to 10,000 to over 100,000 to over 200,000, and you know it, it keeps growing. And people really want to help themselves. They want to heal their bodies. They don't want to have to always rely on medication because a lot of times when you take medication, you know you get side effects and symptoms from the medication. And people will say, oh, I have, you know, this now. And then they go back to the doctor, and the doctor gives them another medication to, you know, override that symptom. And before you know it, you have a whole pharmacy of pills in your bathroom. And uh, so, you know, it, it's good sometimes to try to heal your body and see how much good you can actually do, you know, when it comes to healing your own self. And um, did you do a lot of studying for your, t um, obviously, because uh, people say, oh, it's only a herb, but obviously because you know certain herbs can have certain side effects if you're not careful oh. how you take them, and obviously in how, because of dosages and things like that. So I imagine you had to do a lot of research and studying. Yes, you know, you have to, um, because people don't realize it, but a lot of the medications that are made in the pharmaceutical companies, they use different herbs, too, to make their medications, and a lot of times, supplements are used all the time, and supplements can be just as powerful as a, a drug that's approved by the FDA, um, so you really have to be careful, especially if you're taking medication uh, related to the heart, high blood pressure, um, you know, depression, um, epilepsy, um, you know, uh, high, high, um, a lot of different uh, conditions. Um, when you're taking um, powerful medications, could actually um, have uh, interactions and cause other things to happen um, that might not be so good. So you really, before you take supplements, you really should actually um, check out the ingredients and check out um, if you're taking other medication, maybe ask your doctor if you could take this, this supplement with this medication and if, will there be any problems because you don't want to cause any type of serious in interaction, um, you know, it could be uh, very serious and you also have to, you know, make sure, like, if you decide to take a supplement, do some research and make sure, you know, that supplement is okay because there are supplements out there that are, you know, you know, they, they recommend not to use, and even um, uh, essential oils. There are dangerous essential oils out there that they tell you to stay away from. So you have to be really careful, you know. It's not a game, you know, and because even though it's so popular and you can buy a lot of stuff over the counter, you really have to be careful because you don't want to cause any problems for your own self and your own body. I see you've also done a, a couple of books related to kids, obviously, through epilepsy. My mum, he has epilepsy, my daddy has epilepsy, which I like because obviously kids, when they, they have it, they're obviously even more scared than adults. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I actually wrote those books because when I had my children, um, when um, there was one, it was one day I was actually walking the dog and I felt a seizure coming on and my kids never saw me have a seizure 
and it was it was very scary um, for for my kids, especially you know um, my daughter got really scared, and uh, you know so I decided you know I explained to them what I what I did that day is I, I sat down with them, I explained to them about mommy's epilepsy, and I actually drew pictures and I and I showed my my children you know what a seizure is, what it looks like, and what to do if mommy has a seizure, and by using pictures and by explaining in very simple um, terms. Uh, the kids understood, and they, you know, from that point on, um, they were they were fairly okay with it. You know, they were able to understand when mommy has a seizure. Okay, let's do this. Let's help her. You know, and you know, uh, they were able to actually um, accept it better, and uh, and you know, be able to, um, you know, not have it wasn't so traumatizing, and so scary. Um, they knew how to handle it. They knew what it was, and they knew that mommy had this, and you know, this is what we have to do. Now, if I was to buy your books about uh, various books that you have about um, herbal remedies, what would I gain out of it as a novice? Well, you know, what I did was is I couldn't believe how many different herbs and supplements were out there. And just like we were talking about, you know, there's so, so many herbs could be used for so many different things. One herb could be used for many different conditions. <coughs> and... Um, you know, you, but you have to understand, you know, it's good to know the history of it, it's good to know um, how it's used, why it's used, the precautions that you have to take, and what could happen if you take this medic, you know, this herbal supplement. So I created a 500-page um, book about all the different herbal supplements. I talked about the history, I talked about, you know, explaining what it was, I talked about the different precautions that you need to take, you know, throughout them all. And to just give people, it was kind of like the Bible of herbs, to give people a better understanding of what they are and what they can do. And then as time went on, I talked about different common conditions that a lot of people suffer from. And I talked about different herbal supplements that could be helpful and different alternatives and medicines that could be used to actually help um, people with certain conditions. I know you're, like, I, I know you're um, a true believer in the... Power of Positive Thinking, obviously, because you wrote a book called Master the Power of Positive Thinking. Oh, yes. You know, positive thinking, you know, a lot of times people don't realize, but sometimes the only way of survival is to focus on the positive and to let go of the negative. Um, in life, you know, we, everybody goes through something in life, and everybody has, you know, obstacles that we all acquire over the course of our years. And you really have, you know, in order to get through life, you know, you need to really focus on the positive aspect. A lot of times what people do is we tend to focus more on the negative than we do the positive. When you do that, you kind of build a hole for yourself. You kind of put yourself in, a, in your own little um, your depression grave, and you, you, you tend to, you know, you, you don't focus on the good things about yourself, and you don't focus on the good things about your life. You know, sometimes you forget, you know, um, we, we need to be a little bit... Um, have gratitude and, and appreciation for the things we do have in life, and uh, you know there are a lot of other people out there too that are probably worse than us. You know, and sometimes we have to think about what we have and what other people out there suffer from, and you know think about the, the good things in our life. And sometimes you know don't think about the the bad qualities about yourself. Think about the good qualities and focus on the good qualities and use them to build yourself as a better person and to do and to do positive things and good things in life make yourself feel good and to help others as well. I don't know if it's you or one of your kids that may have asthma, but you've got a book called Asthma, Clear Answers and Smart Advice for Someone Dying Loads of Answer. Asthma. I knew I had asthma as a kid because I walked across the bridge one day and when I got on the bri bridge I thought I was going to die. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of like that. You know, that's how I knew I had asthma. <laughs> Um, you know, asthma is very common. I, I don't personally have it, but I have a lot of people I know that suffer from it. So I did a lot of different research over the course of the years and um, to try to help people that have it. And I came out with um, the book. And, you know, especially children. Children tend to suffer a lot. Um, you know, they have a lot of uh, a lot of kids that suffer from the asthma. So that book was really based on, on research that I did over the course of the years and different things that to help people and to help parents too because sometimes people don't realize you know if the caretaker suffers just as much as as the, the people themselves 
So it, it was just a, a, a book of, of good advice and to explain what what it was, to explain how to help it, and to how to and how to get through life when you have to suffer from a devastating condition like asthma. And for people that may not know you, you're a poet at heart. Yeah. <laughs> I am a, a Pisces, and I tend to be uh, a little bit on the uh, emotional side. So over the course of the years, I, I used to, um, I wrote a lot of poems, and I would write them, and I had a little website, and people would actually come on each morning with their cup of coffee to hear um, a new poem that I had to write, that I had wrote. And, uh, you know, and over, over the course of the years, I wrote a couple of books uh, on poetry, just poetry. And they were, one was based on love, one was based on faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope to give people and to inspire people, uh, to give them hope and, and, and uh, motivation um, to live life and, and to get through life and all its obstacles. And, uh, and I wrote a book, um, I wrote one on faith also. Because sometimes, you know, faith to be our, our biggest, uh, our biggest helper when it comes to getting through life and, and life's uh, obstacles. Yes, I think uh, more people are believing in faith now than they ever did because of the cu current events we're in. Oh, yes, you know, it's, it's devastating all the things that are going on in this world. And, you know, I, I me, myself personally, you know, you, you have to have some type of faith in order to get through life. And, you know, it's, it's my faith and, and the things I believe in that, that help, you know, give me the strength and the... Uh, and, and, you know, and what I need to, to get through life. Uh, I, I know you've got a book that you wrote because obviously when you were pregnant. Did that affect your epilepsy more when you were expecting? Well, they didn't, you know, they didn't have as much information as they have now. And I was considered a high-risk pre pregnancy. And so, you know, they were a little bit nervous about me um, having... Um, having children and at that time I, I still wasn't completely controlled so I was having seizures and certain things could trigger my seizures so um, you know they were very worried about me having um, having, uh, um, having my pregnancy and you know I found a doctor who was great and you know put me on the right medications and it helped me throughout my entire pregnancy and I just had to live life cautiously and do certain things and uh, I had all my kids a little bit earlier on purpose because they wanted, you know, when the children were kicking away and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, causing stress on my body, um, they were very worried that it was seizures and that could uh, injure the baby. So, you know, they were watching me very carefully, but I had three healthy children and they all came out, um, uh, so they all came out wonderfully healthy and, and um, they're all pretty much grown right now. <laughs> But uh, I, I had a wonderful pregnancy, and that's what inspired me to, you know, my doctor was just uh, amazed at how wonderful my pregnancy went, and he just said, oh, Stacy, you should write a book on pregnant, on epilepsy and pregnancy, and, you know, I took his, his advice, and that's what I did. <laughs> well, no, I think it's important to get it out there, because there may be somebody out there listening who, who may be going through the same thing, you never know, and that may give them inspiration to it. This and it thing. Oh, I'll go out and look, look at that book, and I may learn why why I'm why I'm experiencing this anxiety and all that. If you can help one person in life, that's what you, that's my goal in life. It, my my personal goal. Yeah, you know that was the whole thing. You know, if we can help just one person, you know, the the greatest feeling in the world is being able to help somebody else and. If you can help just one person, just the feel, the wonderful feeling of um, of accomplishment and, and helping that person, um, it goes such a long way, you know. And that's what inspired me to take the road that I take now. Uh, it was, you know, being able to help others gave me such a wonderful feeling, and you know, that's why I dedicated my life to helping others because there's no better feeling in the world than to help other people. I see you've got the same kind of problems we have over here with gang culture, you know, when you try to keep your kids away from that kind of life where they can be, oh, we can give you money, we can do this for you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's all over the world. I was very shocked. Um, I was doing a project and uh, 
I had to do a lot of research on um, gangs and and all the all the things that go on with the young teenagers and you know the young adults, and I was shocked to see how many how many gangs and how much um, how much violence goes on between. Uh, young individuals and and how how you know how they can control and put fear into other other people's lives where people feel kind of trapped and they 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 feel like they can't get out of it and uh, that's why I, I've written a book years ago on on gangs because it was just informative information and it, it talked about where they could go to get help if they feel that you know they you know, been, they, they went into a gang and they, they feel trapped and they want a better life for themselves, but they don't know how to get out and so forth. But it was, it's amazing how many, um, how many gangs there are in, in the United States alone and in the world around us. Well, over here we got the knife culture. But, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it seems to be, um, if you don't carry a knife, y y you know, the next person might. I mean, I've never... I'd rather walk away from violence if I can. Um, most definitely. And what's your obsession with chicken soup? <laughs> well, years ago, um, um, the, I had written, um, um, I had uh, written some stories, and Chicken Soup for the Soul is a, a huge series, especially in the United States, and um, it was. Um, it was uh, written, um, about, it was for people, it was a bunch of different stories um, written by a very famous author, and he, he collected a bunch of different stories, and they, I had submitted a poem, and then I had submitted a, a story about um, shopping for the soul, and, um, and then I had uh, talked about um, how, how it felt when I first got my license, and how I was able to go, to the, go uh, shopping, and then when I was younger, um, my epilepsy, I had to uh, stop uh, driving for a while until they could control my seizures, and uh, I talked about how um, little things in life, like going shopping and, and doing things, can mean so much, and it was basically to explain that, you know, sometimes the littlest things in life that we, we, we do take advantage of and we don't realize because when, when I couldn't drive anymore and I couldn't go to the stores with my friends when I wanted to, um, you know, it felt like I was in prison in my own home. And sometimes we forget, you know, the littlest things in life um, could mean uh, so much and, and we could teach people how to actually, um, you know, be appreciative for the things they have, you know, because sometimes we don't realize the things are taken away from us, um, how much things really mean to um, because we have things in our life that we have every day and don't realize how valuable they are to us. And sometimes we have to stop and think about what we have in life and not what we don't have and really be appreciative and really, you know, be thankful for the things that we have and the life that we have. I'm, uh, I like your website because like everybody else, you tend to give away free books and I like free books. I mean, some of them are good to me, like getting glowing skin. My skin will never glow. <laughs> uh, hair growth is no good to me. I'm nearly getting bald. But hey, the Chaka, Chanka, Chaka, Chaka, I can always get that word wrong. C H A K R A checklist. Yeah, that's one. Uh, uh, formula to overcoming anxiety. Well, I have OCD, so I do do anxiety every day of the week. So I probably could do with two of those books. Yeah, you know, um, I'll probably put. I'm going to be putting more books on my on the internet for people to download for free. But uh, the chakras is really good. Um, people don't realize when your the energy in our bodies actually play a big toll, and when your chakras are aligned. And you are, and your body is working in, in um, kind of like uh, in, uh, in, in the force where it's supposed to be working. The energies are aligned, and you're in touch with your your inner self. Um, you can actually um, feel the difference because you know, especially if you have OCD, you tend to like focus on things. You can really get yourself stressed out, and a lot of times you tend to when when you have OCD, you tend to focus on things that aren't really that important but they're important to you 
but you focus so much on it that it could actually really stress you out and, and people don't realize, but 90% of medical conditions are caused by stress. Like I know someone who is OCD about being on time everywhere and he has to be on time and he will get himself so stressed out because his OCD is always being on time for everything. But, you know, I've learned over the course of the years, especially when you have epilepsy, stress could cause seizures. So you have to really learn how not to get yourself upset over the little things in life and to focus on the big things when you have a big problem and learn a, sol a, a solution that, you know, that will, will fix the problem and won't stress you out on the, on the course of doing so. So, you know, you really have to, um, you have to really uh, learn how to teach yourself how to actually be able to um, just, uh, you know, try to focus on the, on the small things in life and, and, and not so much, you know, get yourself crazy over everything in life, you know, especially when, when we have OCD. And we all have a little OCD in us. Everybody does. Um, you know, it's a condition I think it, we all have. We all have our little OCDs about something. So, um, you know, and then doing, aligning your chakras can actually help, you know, and it's all about meditation. It's about, um, it's about stretching and focusing, breathing, and it can actually be very helpful, very easy to do. And you can even go on YouTube too, and they have little classes, and they can teach you how to um, do the different meditations and the different stretches to align your chakras and different breathing exercises. And you will feel a difference. You know, when I when I do those meditations and those stretches and those exercises, and I feel um, a definitely a, a, a difference. You feel more relaxed, you focus better, and you do see you, you see a difference in your own self and health. Well, I, I, I've got better with myself because I have neurological problems and I, mm -hmm. some time ago I, just, I, I was told I have mild small vessel disease of the brain which can affect my cognitive skills and it gets, right. I, 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 I can't, I can only do one thing at a time now because I get more stressed mm -hmm. out than I used to. But I think that's because my brain gets too confused too quickly. Right. So that I've learned now to slow myself a lot down. It did affect me for a little while. I did get thinking, oh God, perhaps my speech should play up. You know, when I write, sometimes I don't write the right words and I was really worrying about it. And then I think, I don't know, like my wife said, said to me, the more you obsess about it, the worse you'll get. I know when I'm tired it gets worse. When I'm physically tired it will get worse right yeah I think um, you know what it also is helpful to do, create some short term goals and get a little journal and create some short term goals and some long term goals and you know if you if you can accomplish one thing in, in, the, in the course of the day that's a huge achievement some people don't even usually accomplish anything, you know. But if you kind of give yourself a little list and you can clearly think of the things you need to get done, you know, you can actually focus on, on one each day. And then if you get that one done and you feel up to doing the, the second one, you can focus on the second one. But a lot of people, you know, if, if you can't organize your, your thoughts, you know, you're not going to get much accomplished. You know, I, I have many people I know that have a difficult time um, organizing their thoughts. And when you can't organize your thoughts, you tend to, a lot of times, not be able to accomplish um, a lot of things. And before you know it, the day is over. The day goes by so quickly. So it's always good to keep a journal, keep some short-term goals, long-term goals, you know, and to, you know, and to write down everything and organize everything. Because if you have it in front of you, it's so much easier to, to get more things done. And especially with epilepsy over the course of the years, it's definitely, you know, it's done a little toll on my memory and, and other things. So being able to write things and have it in front of me always has helped me as well. Yeah, I, I, I mean, that's why I'm a, straight, a strong advocate for mental health, because I used to work in mental health, and obviously I have that mental health. And people say, oh, you can't say you've got mental health. And I say, well, what's wrong with that? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I get, I, I sometimes get very paranoid thoughts. But I think that's down to when I was younger. Where we, I was kept behind at school, me and another girl. And I think that affected me more than I cared to think. 
because I think I always have that feeling that I've ought to ca I've had to catch up. I know it's probably my inner thought, and it's probably never really gone. I've I've got better with it, but there are times I think, oh, people think I'm stupid, you know, like that. I get very really annoyed with myself, and then I've, and then I took it at not physically verbally out on people and it's not very nice I will admit that it's, uh, my wife doesn't like me when I go like that and I, it's quite right it doesn't <laughs> but I mean, I'm honest to say about it because I think if I don't tell other people that he, he, you don't get these things and you can deal with them because it's like smoking or drinking or eating or anything right. once you've got admit you've got that problem you're not going to cure it overnight it's never gonna, you're going to get slips but right. as long as you know that, that's good. Oh, 100%. You know, most of the problems that we do occur in our adulthood life is from our childhood life. And it travels with us. And a lot of times people don't even realize that a lot of the issues they have as, as an adult, it comes goes back to some type of um, traumatic issue, you know. And it may not be traumatic for others, but for that individual, it was traumatic. And, um, you know... The, the, the biggest thing is to do is, is to help you in your adulthood life is to accept you have the problem and to learn to love yourself. Realize that this is who I am and this is a part of me. And you have to learn to accept everything about you and love everything about you. And once you're able to do that, then you can focus on, on the problem and you can focus on ways of making yourself better. And, you know, even even talking to other people who have similar issues, too, uh, when you realize you're not alone, you know, it, it's the greatest thing. Because so many people, you know, there's these conditions, every all these conditions, there's millions of people suffering from the same conditions as you and I. But so many people, you know, feel so alone because they're so embarrassed um, of sharing. They don't want to share with others. But the best thing you can do is, is to share with others. And if you don't want to talk about it, I always tell people, write it down on a piece of paper. Write a little diary. Get it out in the open. Get it out of your system. Because once you get it out of your system, it, it feels so much better. It's kind of like, you know, just, just taking it and then, you know, over time, you know, throwing it away and letting go when you feel like you are overcome you know, this situation. But, you know, the best thing to do is, like you said, you have to accept it, and then you have to learn how to work on it and improve yourself. And there'll always be slip-ups. You know, but the, the fact that you accepted who you are, that you love yourself, and that you're willing to actually try to improve yourself, that's a huge accomplishment. I see you are on Mix.com. <coughs> it's alright, the dog's barking because the doorbell's gone off. Uh, it's alright, yeah, I'll we'll keep you on there. It's my, my dog, Mitzi, who's a Jack Russell. Those loonies of bucks and frogs, and any time anybody comes to the door, she likes to say, "Hello, how are you?" And I have two shih tzus. Yeah, yeah, we used to have shih tzus with me. We had a shih tzu called Robbie, uh, no, uh, Star, and Poppet. Mm -hmm. And my wife well, cared about them very deeply, and so did I. Um, anyway, where was I going? I, don't, I, don't, I forgot where we were going. Lost track now. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. You got your own mix dot com. Where do you do you do your own podcasting, or have you never considered it? Um, I've been on uh, a ton of different shows, podcast shows. But I have considered wanting to do it. Um, I um, I would like to do it in the future. I'm actually working with a gentleman. I'm thinking about putting together a podcast. Um, and uh, because a lot of people um, have a lot of interest in uh, learning about um, natural healing or learning about, um, you know, positive thinking and healing ourselves and getting through life and the stresses of life and, and you know, different different helpful advice and, and talking about different, you know, herbal supplements and alternative ways to actually help you uh, each day on your on your journey. Uh, on your, your journey through life and your voyage through life and to, you know, different ways to overcome a lot of things. So I, I was thinking about, you know, actually working with somebody and trying to put together a podcast in the near future. I think 
it's one thing because the subject is a fascinating subject and there's lots of in-depth more questions we could go into but I think we'd be going into days <laughs> hours yeah it, it, it is a, fasc- it's a, a fascinating subject I mean uh, you know, the, as you say the, the aspirin which is the most used probably herb on the planet because it is like a herb because it comes from a tree I think it came from a tree yeah. I think it was the native Indians I don't, don't think I think I'm correct they used to chew it didn't they to I'm, I'm not 100% sure I'm not, I'm not sure about the history of the aspirin I know that a lot of them have got um, what the so-called witches of Salem. They were herbalists as such, weren't they? Yeah. Yes, they were. And I, I, and a lot of people think that because of that belief, and the use alternative, the use of alternative medicine back then, was considered like witchcraft. And I think that's why they. I mean, and obviously there was women were treated a little bit more different back then to now they are now but the um the uh the history of medicine um when you when you think of alternative medicine a lot of it came it started with um uh the um with the, from india and from china the chinese medicine um they had a lot of different um a lot of different herbs and a lot of different roots and plants that they use for many different conditions, and even the Chinese medicine, they used a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different ways of, um, of exercise and, and stretching the body to help with certain conditions. It's like, for instance, yoga is, is can stretch the, um, with stretching the body helps with the circulation of, of, of the. Uh, of the blood, which can increase your energy and, and help you with your focus and other things. So, you know, those two countries especially were very, very big on um, on alternative medicine, and they still are. And a lot of the stuff came from those two countries especially. Well, I used to, st- well, I used to study karate. I do still do basics, but that's based in mm-hmm. uh, the f- internal forces and and uh, learning to use the power of the earth and all that. I mean, everything's got mysticism in it if you look for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And do you do you think now that doctors are beginning to... Obviously, always see a doctor first if you've got a medical problem, but they, they, they're joining forces with holistic approaches like herbal medicine... Uh, exercising, uh, using a uh, breathing techniques and stuff like that. Do you think that they're more considering it now? I think more doctors are than they used to be. Oh yes, I think I think a lot of a, a lot more doctors are are more receptive to alternative medicine and um and different different herbs and and different ways of healing the body more than ever um you know a, a lot of what you'll see more like herbalists are are more apt to want to try um different different ways of healing the body um you know you know where doctors are 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 starting to be more receptive but if it's not backed by science a lot of doctors are are not willing to um, be so accepted. Um, but um, a lot of things are starting to become backed by science. Um, they're starting to see a lot of um, a lot of different researches that are being done in in a lot of uh, different studies, and they're showing that a lot of these different herbs and a lot of these different supplements and plants and um, are being actually more accepted and um, and. Used and they, they're seeing um, they're seeing actual positive uh, results from them. So slowly but surely, I think um, I think alternative medicine is going to be played even more so in the future. But I do see a lot of doctors be- becoming more accepted towards it. One hundred percent. 
please mention now where you would like people to go to find you and your latest book out so then people can look that up. They can find me on thecompleteherbalguide.com and we have the book, The Complete Herbal Guide, and if you go on there, um, I have an area where you can click on about me and it leads you right to all my different books. Um, but The Complete Herbal Guide is one of the books that we really like to promote because it's really very informative and it helped, has helped a lot of people over the course of the years. And we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from people because, you know, it gives a lot of good, accurate information um, about uh, the different supplements and the different um, ways of alternative medicine and how it can heal your body. And I think that's important, I think. Uh, yeah, like we said earlier, this this is uh, um, it's a very long and illustrious um, subject that we that you could talk about lots of things and how they could help them in different various ways. But I think that's what you should do in your podcast. I think you should start for like A for asthma and B for whatever, and then sort of say this is what this one does and. Yeah, I advise you to go to the doctor first, but at least use this in conjunction with your doctor, because I know you have to do that, because legal matters. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I think I've covered everything I can think of for you to say, Stacey. I know you could probably mention lots more. I, I, I have no doubt you could, but I think we've mentioned more or less what you do, how you do it. That you... Um, is there anything else you'd like to mention? Um, you know, basically, you know, it, um, our, our website talks about a lot of different um, things. It, goes, it talks about health, it talks about um, fitness, exercise, and, well, we have a bunch of different healthy recipes on our website. Um, we have a lot of experts that have come on and su submitted their articles to teach people from um, a medical standpoint. Uh, we have a lot of different, you know, different conditions that we list and all different types of natural remedies that could be helpful. So, you know, and then if people want to come on and even if they if they don't see something um, but they want to know information on it, you know, I always say leave it on, on the website and, you know, we'll be happy to look into it and, you know, help people as much as we can. Um, we've been... I, our website has been here for over 10 years, and, you know, we've built a, a very large website, and, uh, you know, our whole goal is to, to help others and to help others, you know, feel better and ma maintain optimal health. So whatever we can do at the thecompleteherbalguide.com, you know, we'd be happy to do um, anything we can to help others. Well, this is a bit, I always ask the same, guess the same question, and it normally felt, people go, what? Stacey, <laughs> what is your unique sign-off? My unique sign-off? Yes. Um, I usually tell people, um, you know, uh, I always want people to feel happy, healthy, and lead a positive, um, a positive, uh, fulfilling life. And I always, you know, and then I always like, uh, I always tell people, you know, faith, courage, wisdom, strength, and hope. The five, the, the five uh, things you need in order to maintain um, a, a healthy life. And, uh, you know, um, I basically, you know, it's all about leading a healthy, happy, and productive life. And I guess that's my sign off, you know, you know, come to the Herbal Guide, you know, to lead a happy, healthy, and productive life. And, uh, you know, it, and that's the things you want in life. You want to live a happy, healthy, and productive life, you know. Happy, you know, life, you know, if, if you're not happy, you know, uh, life doesn't mean much to people. So it, it's all about being happy, and, and the first thing of being happy is, is loving yourself and, and enjoying everything around you. So, um, you know, uh, you know, basically, you know, that's what I, I, I try to do is to show people ways to turn themselves around and to, to lead a happy, healthy, and productive life. So here's mine for you, Stacy. Stacy. I've been chilly or chilly with you about herbs. Get it? Get it? Herbs. Complete her herbal guide dot com. She's a popular writer, with presenter, and a do gooder, and a and very informative person who's had to deal with 
a major thing in life, but she's just taken it on the chin and got on with it. <laughs> and that's no, uh, people say, oh, it's easy for you to say, but she's lived it, loved it, dealt with it, wrote about it. And probably would sing a song about it if you could sing. I don't know if she would, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, the end. <laughs>